Namaste, and welcome to another episode of Yoga Vasishta. Today I want to talk about the specific excellences of Yoga Vasishta. Let's take a look. Know, O high-minded Rama, that this work is the best of all scriptures on spiritual knowledge. It is the auspicious Maharamayana, the scripture of scriptures. This Ramayana is the best of histories, and it serves to enlighten understanding. It is known to contain the essence of all histories. By hearing these doctrines, one easily finds his liberation coming of itself to him. This is why it is regarded as the most holy writing. So the aim of all scriptures, the aim of all yoga practices and meditation is liberation, moksha, freedom from samsara, repeated birth and death. So if you can get this result simply by reading well, this is the most wonderful thing in the world. <laughs> and this is the highest criterion of a teaching or a scripture is that it can deliver this liberation. This liberation means the end of suffering. It means the end of birth and death in the material world and even in heaven. One goes beyond all those destinations now, other scriptures will give you higher worlds. Yes, you can go to heaven, Swarga. You can go to the spiritual world, Vaikuntha. You can live with the incarnations, avatars of God, and so on. And these are all wonderful benedictions, but compared to ultimate liberation, they pale in significance. <laughs> And that liberation is available in this very life by following the teachings of Yoga Vasishta. So that is why it's considered the most holy writing, because the effect that it has, which we went over in the last two episodes, is clearly beyond any other scripture, especially those on a merely religious platform. Now let's go on. One feels himself liberated in this life by listening to these lectures, just as one finds himself healed of a disease by the potion of some effective medicine. The attentive hearer of these lessons perceives their efficacy in himself in the same way as one feels the effects of curses or blessings that always have their full effects in time. All worldly miseries are at an end with he who considers well these spiritual lectures within himself. A similar effect is hard to produce through charity or austerities or through performing rituals ordained in the ancient Vedic texts or through the many hundreds of practices that scriptures describe. So this is the real criterion. This is the real effect of Yoga Vashishta. This is what makes it unique, is that one feels this liberation in this very life without changing anything. I mean, if one is addicted to gross misconduct or indulgence in sense gratification, that has to be dealt with. But other than those gross impediments, Anyone who is living a holy life can immediately feel the benefit, can immediately feel the effect of this liberating doctrine. Now, the thing that he mentions here, which is very important, is that one should consider well within oneself the content of these lectures. So what does that mean? That means one should think it through very carefully, step by step, by one's own reasoning, and arrive at the same conclusions through independent thinking and observation. So in other words, one should consider these ideas, then observe one's own life, 
and then by going step by step through the logic, the reasoning that's given by Valmiki, one should come to the same conclusion by independent thought. This is very important because simply by belief, one cannot get liberation. Otherwise, those who perform rituals and ceremonies and recite prayers and mantras and so on like that would easily also get liberation, but they don't. And the proof of that is they are unable to give up their gross engagements in sense gratification. You see, the, the religious people have it backwards. They say you should give up sense gratification and then meditate. But actually that's impossible. And if you try it, you'll fail. Why? Because we need pleasure. We need enjoyment in life. Otherwise, what's the meaning of life? Therefore, the enjoyment of life that comes from meditation has to be tasted in reality. Then one can give up lower pleasures. In fact, it happens effortlessly. Huh? If I am getting a superior enjoyment by just sitting and contemplating my consciousness, then why should I make so much effort? It's difficult and expensive to uh, get material sense gratification. <laughs> so if one can get a higher taste first, these things are very easy to give up. In fact, it happens effortlessly. So that's the point of this Yoga Vashishta. Rama, you will see in the first chapters, in the first book especially, Rama has come to the point where he sees through the falsity of the world. He has gone beyond ordinary life already simply by his own thinking. And because of this, he's easily able to drop all this uh, addiction to gross pleasures. So in the same way, one should practice this yoga vashishta and feel for oneself the result of this reasoning. And then easily all these other things will be given up. This collection of 32,000 shlokas is judged to contain the essence of the means to liberation and to confer the final annihilation of individuality. As a lamp presents its light to every waking man, so does this work effect the ultimate enlightenment of every person, whether he would like it or not. One's knowledge of this work, whether by his own perusal or by hearing about it from others' repetition, tends to the immediate obliteration of his errors and to the increase of his delight, as if done by the holy Ganges river of heaven. As the fallacy of mistaking a rope for a snake is removed by examining it, so the fallacy of the reality of the world is removed by reading and studying this work, which gives peace to one who is vexed and tired of the world. Now, who isn't vexed, huh? <laughs> who isn't put into so much trouble and anxiety by the nature of this world? There's always some insecurity, always some uh, upset, always some uncertainty in life. So in that way, after some time, we become tired. We become fatigued by the constant stress. Huh? So... The purpose of Yoga Vashishta is to remove this stress by shining a lamp of knowledge on the uh, illusion that this world is a solid reality. Actually, this world is an illusion. Huh? Just like the waves of the ocean are nothing but the ocean, and the waves themselves just come and go. Similarly, what we think of as reality are simply waves on the ocean of consciousness. In other words, they're illusions, projections of our own minds. And as soon as we stop 
uh, upholding or projecting these pictures of the world, the whole illusion falls apart and things are revealed for what they really are, which is nothing but Brahman, consciousness or God. So in this way, the Yoga Vashishta reveals the fallacy of the reality of the world. And of course, also the fallacy of the ego, the fallacy of the mind, and the fallacy of religious knowledge. Religious knowledge is simply a crutch. It's something to get us through. Huh? It's something to slowly begin to pry our minds away from this illusion of the reality of the world. But the teaching of Yoga Vasishta completely destroys that illusion. There's no way that it can survive <laughs> in the face of the superior knowledge of Brahma Jnan. All the existing scenes of the world will vanish upon their mature consideration. Just like thoughts in a dream are dispersed after waking and realizing one had been dreaming. Whatever there is in other works can also be found herein, but what is found here cannot be found elsewhere. Therefore the learned call this the treasury of philosophy. Whoever attends to these lectures every day shall have his excellent understanding undoubtedly stored day by day with transcendent knowledge of divinity. He who finds this scripture to be disagreeable to his polluted taste may prefer to browse some other scripture that is more wordy and eloquent. In other words, <laughs> we're going to hit you with the plain truth. If you don't like it, you don't have to read it. <laughs> Sorry, dude. <laughs> so the idea is when one realizes transcendence, the scenes of this world vanish. It's not that one can no longer perceive the world, but one does not perceive it as reality, as a solid object. Instead, one perceives it as an illusion, as simply a layer of projection by the mind on top of consciousness. And of course, one's consciousness is under one's direct control. So one can direct one's consciousness to perceive the world or the world within, the spiritual world. And that is the source of all bliss. That is where ecstasy is found. That is where the real pleasure of life exists. Because once one knows that inner pleasure, then one is no more addicted to the external world, no more under the control of the material energy, the material illusion that this is a solid reality, you are your body, <laughs> the mind is the only way to perceive things and so on like that. Because one knows a better way. Once you know the better way, you will automatically give up the worse way, <laughs> the way that leads to suffering. So one should have transcendent knowledge of divinity. That means direct perception of God. And that is exactly what you get by cultivating this knowledge in Brahma Vidya, uh, this Jnana Yoga. This means direct perception of God, Nirvana, the disappearance of the illusion of material reality and the consequent suffering, leaving only bliss. Aung Tat Sat, Aung Harihi Aung. Karunar Navamai Kardakadinalgum Aruna Chalashivam Yidam